Aloha everybody, this is Gigi from Kauai Community College. In this video, we are talking about optimization. So in optimization problems, you will have what we call a constraint. And a constraint is a restriction of some variable that you have to follow. In this case, um, we are looking for two positive numbers whose product is 750. And we want to make sure that the sum of one number and 10 times the other is at its minimum. Okay, so if you were to describe this to someone, you would say, hey, um, the product of those numbers, let's call that xy, has to be 750. And then what we want to do is we want to minimize, we want to minimize, minimize uh, what? We want to minimize x plus 10y. Okay, so, and, um, so in this case, if we were to express this as a function, we would say right here, y is going to be 750 divided by x. We would plug that into y. So we will have a subject function f of x is equal to x plus 10 multiplied by 750 is 7500 0, 0 divided by x. And we are going to go and minimize that. Okay, so in order to minimize that, we would have to find a derivative. And the derivative will be 1 minus 7500 0, 0 over x squared, okay? And so x cannot be 0, and, and as a matter of fact, x is a positive number, so we know that x has to be greater than 0, That's and y also have to be greater than 0. That's what the, the restrictions are for x and y, okay? Now, so when x is greater than zero, this is always defined so that the uh, critical point, meaning f prime of x, is equal to zero when one minus 7,500 over x squared is equal to zero, or we would say 7,500 over x squared is equal to one, x squared is equal to 7,500, square root both sides, x has to be square root of 7,500, reduced to be 50, square root of 3, and we're only going to take the positive but not the negative because x is a positive, in a, um, not integer, but positive number. This is not an integer, right? It's, an, it's actually is an irrational number. Okay, so now let's go ahead and either use the first derivative test or the second derivative test to confirm. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use the second derivative test um, because really there isn't uh, that upper boundary for, uh, for the variable. Suppose x is really small, um, then 7,500 divided by a really small number, y is going to be really big. So I'm not sure what the restriction might be. Um, and if x is really big, then y will just be have to be really small. So um, I think it's safer in this case to use the second derivative to, to justify that um, absolute max or min. Okay, and so when we do take the second derivative, um, you would say the second derivative is the uh, deriv derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of negative 7,500x to the negative 2, neg bring the negative 2 down, that would be positive. Um, 1, 50, and then 2, 0. And then that would be x to the third power. Now we know that x is a positive number, so then the second derivative is always greater than zero, which means our function is greater than zero means concaving up. And it is always concaving up. That means that this right here, the critical point that we find would have to be our minimum. 
Okay, so that concave up. So that thing right there, that critical point, must be our minimum. So that means we have x being square root um, 50, square root of 3. So we would say uh, now 50 square root of 3 times y is equal to 750. So y is equal to 750 divided by 50 square root of 3. 750 divided by 50, that is 15. So y is 15 over square root of 3. Rationalize, we would have 15 square root of 3 over 3, which reduced to be 5 square root of 3. Okay, so that is the answer. Now, if we want to check to make sure that that's okay, 5 times 50 is 250. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. And 3 times 250 is 750 as needed. So um, those are our two numbers. They are actually not integers. They are irrational numbers. 50 square root of 3 and 5 square root of 3 are the two numbers whose um, product is 750, whose have the sum of 1 plus 10 times the other is at its minimum.